LibPGP is a modular networking stack, which includes libraries and several languages that you can use to build peer-to-peer -peer applications. With these libraries, you can create LibP2P nodes. A LibP2P node is simply a program that runs in your computer. This program can be written in Go, JavaScript, or Rust, but there are also other programming languages available. A LibP2P node can connect to other nodes through a network. Because LibP2P is a modular networking stack, you can choose which protocol to use. In this example, both TCP and UDP protocols are used. In this tutorial, we are going to work on a Go LibP2P application that creates two nodes, a source node and a target node. The source node will listen on a random TCP port and will get a random peer ID. The target node will listen on the 8007 TCP port and will get a random peer ID. Then, we are going to connect the source node to the target node. To complete this tutorial, make sure that you have Go installed. And if you don't have it already, clone the Launchpad Tutorial Repository, which contains the template that you will use in this tutorial. First, we are going to open the code template in Visual Studio Code. So, in the Launchpad Tutorial Repository that we cloned previously, we select the libp2p simple node folder. As you can see, there are two folders. The app folder contains the main Go file, which is a template that we will complete. The main function is the entry point of the application, so it handles the flow of the program. As you can see, we first create a source node and we print its ID and multi addresses. We do the same for the target node and then we connect the source node to the target node. Now we are going to create the source node, so we move to the corresponding method. To create a node in libp2p, we use the new function. Without passing any parameters, this function creates a node that listens on a random TCP port. The new function returns a struct called host. This struct contains the methods to manage our libp2p node. We put this struct in a variable called node and we return it if there are no errors. Now we can move on to create a target node. In this case, the node will listen on a specific port. Again, we use the new method. As you can see, we can pass several options as parameters. This function configures the node to listen on a given multi-address. With this multi-address, we are configuring the node to listen on any local IP address at the 8007 port. Then we simply store the node in a variable, we check for errors and we return it. Now we are going to connect the source node to the target node. First, we need the address of the target node. The info from host function returns the address information of a node. This information includes the peer ID and the multi address where the node is listening. With this information, we can invoke the connect method on the source node. As parameters, we simply pass a go context and the target node information. Then we check for errors. Let's move on to the last function we have to complete today. We are going to get the number of open connections of the source node. This way, we can verify that the connection that we implemented previously works as expected. On the source node, we are going to invoke the network method and then the peers method. This returns the peers that the source node is connected to. The peers are returned as an array, so we simply count the number of elements in the array. Then we return the number. Now we can test the application. First, we open the command line terminal and we move to the app directory, which contains a template that we completed. Then, we run the Go application. The source node gets a random peer ID and a random TCP port. The target node gets a random peer ID but listens on the 8007 port. 
Finally, we can also see that the source node has only one peer connection.